Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this end of project webinar. Um, we'll be getting started in uh, five or six minutes time. Thank you. Hello, um, this is Steve Payne, uh, project manager at IDME. Um, we're going to wait another uh, three or four minutes, uh, let some more people join. So uh, I plan to get started in three or four minutes time. Thank you. Hello everyone, um, welcome to this end of project webinar and I'm going to get started in two minutes time, in two minutes, thank you. 
Hello, um, everybody, and welcome uh, to this End of Project webinar. Uh, I'm going to get started now. Um, hopefully you can see the screen and hear me OK. Um, my name's Steve Payne and I'm Project Manager INME. And this is the End of Project webinar for the development of best practices and guidelines for the use of expanded beam connectors in data centre applications. Uh, now, you've probably noticed you've You've all been put on mute and had your cameras disabled on joining the webinar. Uh, there will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the webinar. And to do this, you'll need to use uh, the chat facility at the top, uh, probably at the top menu bar of your team's uh, meeting window. Uh, just to let you know, this webinar will be recorded. Um, and uh, this, as well as the next session, the, the repeated webinar later today, um, and uh, an edited version will be available uh, through our website. Uh, now, just to give you some background, the project uh, started early last year and has been led by uh, Tatiana Budinsky and Tiger Ninomia, uh, both of Senko. Now, the, today the presentations will be given uh, by Tatiana, who is a consultant to Senko, and uh, Tatiana will be joined by Michael Kader Callan, who's Senior Principal Engineer at US Connect, and also Riley Freeland, who's Senior Development Associate at Corning Research and Development Corporation. So without further delay, I'm gonna, now going to hand uh, over to Tatiana. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Steve, for a very nice introduction. And uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, participate in today's webinar and present some results of uh, project this project on expanded beam connectors. First of all, on this slide you can see all our project participants and really I'd, I'd like to say thank you to all companies who greatly contributed in this project success. Uh, I'd like to name them. It's Senka Advanced Components, Corning, Fiber QA, Fuji Kura, Sumitomo Electric, US Connect, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, and Resolute Photonics. And I truly believe that the success this, of this project was because of a great collaboration between all project participants. And we also represent in all supply chain from connector suppliers to uh, equipment manufacturers for visual inspection equipment to final users like IBM, Intel, and Microsoft. Therefore, with this one, please, uh, Steve, go to the next slide. Our agenda for today will be included introduction and project objectives. Then we will present application of dry contamination airborne dust particles, followed by discussion on application of wet contamination artificial sebum, which represents uh, fingerprints as a contamination. Then we will explain experimental methodology, results and data analysis. And at the end, we will uh, provide some discussion on impact of connector type on total cost of ownership for data center operators. Finally, by conclusions. Next slide, please. As you know, expanded beam connectors um, less sensitive to contamination than physical contact connectors. And this is why they offer some potential cost savings due to reduced cleaning requirements. However, I'd like to mention that up to date there is no standard for this kind of connectors. We don't have any performance standard, no cleanliness standard, and some guidelines and best practices for cleaning of expanded beam connectors have not yet been developed. Since 2015, INAMI team has been studying the impact of contamination on expanded beam connectors, specifically on multi-mode expanded beam connectors. And in 2015, maybe 2018, we finished two projects uh, as a preliminary investigation. This project summarize further results, the results of development of best practices and guidelines for the use of expanded beam connectors in data center operations. Next slide, please. 
I'd like to start with project objectives. We have three prime objectives. First of all, investigate the impact of contamination on optical performance of expanded beam connectors. And we choose two parameters, insertion loss and return loss. Second objective, to develop recommendation on cleaning methods for single mode and multi-mode expanding beam connectors with different technologies based on experimental data. And our last objective was to clarify the prospects for cost and time savings due to installation and implementation of expanded beam connectors in data centers. Next slide, please. In our study, we used five styles of connectors. First of all, on expanding beam, we use single mode expanding beam and multi mode expanding beam. On my right hand side, you can see some pictures of connectors. Therefore, picture A represents multi mode expanded beam connector, and picture D, it's a bottom right, is single mode expanded beam. We also studied single mode angle physical contact and multi mode physical contact connectors and single mode air gap connectors. So for continue on my right, you have more pictures, which is picture B, single mode air gap, and picture C is single mode APC connectors. I'd like to add that for multi-mode expanding beam connectors, uh, this connector was used MXC connector platform, and the remaining style used the MPO platform. And new techniques were developed for investigating of contamination by dust, and oil. And now I'd like to pass the presentation to my INME colleague, is uh, Rally Freeland uh, from Corning. Tatiana. So first, Thank I would like to just first I would like to describe the application of dry contamination or dust to the connectors. For this test, we created a an apparatus which is simple and inexpensive to build which allows it to be replicated across many different test sites. The picture in the middle shows a schematic of the diagram where there's an air inlet at the top, which pressurizes the box, and an exhaust that lets the, the air flow out. On the side of the box are grommets that the DUT, the connectors to be contaminated, are inserted into. The picture in the upper middle shows a connector inserted through one of the grommets into the box. And as you can see, more than just the ferrule in face goes into the, into the dust contamination system. In fact, a large portion of the ferrule is inside the box. And then the picture further to the right shows uh, a photo of the whole setup showing the air inlet, uh, which is yeah. item B, the exhaust, which is C, one of the grommets, which is D, the connector inserted into that E, and the initial dust, which is F. I should mention that the dust we're using is a standardized test dust, commonly known as ASHRAE test dust number two. This is composed of alumina, silica, other minerals, and fibrous material. And then the pictures on the bottom left show an example of one of the MPO connectors after contamination. And you can see the contaminants uh, on the feral surface, and then a picture of the uh, connector showing the fibers as well as the contamination. Next, please. For the wet contamination, a fixture was also created to allow the connector to be contaminated with the artificial sebum. The sebum is used to simulate connector in-face contamination due to fingerprints. The sebum was transferred from the storage container, item one in the figure below, onto a rubber pad there shown in figure number two. That rubber pad was sized such that it contacts only the fiber region of the DUT, so just the area around the fibers on the connector in-face. And then a guiding fixture uh, was used to locate the connector onto the rubber pad so that the sebum was transferred onto the connector in-face. Next, please. 
This flowchart illustrates the experimental methodology. In this experiment, there was an initial phase of preparing a new connector pair and recording the insertion loss. So that top line of, of uh, segment shows an imaging of the initial connector pair, measuring the initial insertion loss and return loss, and again, imaging both connectors of the connector pair. This allows us to record a baseline of the, uh, of the insertion loss. Next, only one of the connectors in that pair is contaminated with either the sebum or the dust. And then that starts a cycle of imaging, measurements, and re-imaging, and then cleaning, which is used to determine how the insertion loss changes as the contamination is cleaned, and also how the contaminants might move around the connector interface during the mating and unmating cycle. And then this cycle ends after the connector has been measured and cleaned three times. Next, please. That flowchart here is discretized into uh, distinct steps. So there are 20 steps in all, starting with obtaining a clean reference in DUT, all the way through imaging the final connector after the last cycle. The first cycle is the referencing measurements. And then these cycles one through four are the cleaning and measurements. And note that when we record values, we will only be recording the insertion loss change from the initial reference measurement. In this way, we're only reporting the change of insertion loss due to the contamination itself. We're also recording the absolute return loss values because small changes in the return loss are less impactful when the return loss is very high. Next, please. One of the steps in this cleaning in this uh, measurement cycle is connector cleaning. Each connector pair is cleaned with a push actuated dry cleaning tool designed for that style of connector. So this standardized the cleaning method across the various connectors that were used. In the cleaning step, both the DUT and the reference were removed from the adapter, and two clicks of the tool was used for each connector, which meant that four clicks were used for each reference DUT pair. The, note that the adapter is not cleaned. After the cleaning cycle, the connectors were reinserted into the adapter for, for continued measurements. A dry cleaning tool designed for the single mode expanded beam connector was not available at the time of this experiment. And therefore, one out of all of these connector styles was cleaned using compressed air after dust contamination. This shows some examples of the contaminated connectors. The images on the left show one example of a multi-mode expanded beam. The top row, A and B, are dust contamination. And the bottom row, C and D, are sebum contamination. Also in this uh, block of, of images, A and C, the left column, are before cleaning, and B and D, the right column, are after cleaning. And so you can see that the push actuated cleaning tool for this connector pair removed a large portion of the dust and also cleaned the uh, areas with where the fibers are of the sebum. There is some residual sebum, but the fiber and the, the lenses are, 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 uh, are, are free of, of contamination. The images on the right hand side show a multi-mode physical contact connector with dust again on the top row A and B and sebum on the bottom row C and D. And again, A and C are before cleaning and B and D are after cleaning. And again, you can see how the post actuated cleaning tool substantially removes contamination from the fibers. And so now I would like to turn the presentation over to Michael Cater Callen, who will describe the results and data analysis. Thank you, Riley. Uh, 
There were five participants in this study. Three of the participants performed the actual testing. The other two participants provided samples. A total of 195 devices were tested where each device was a, a mated pair multi-fiber connector with uh, 12 fibers. As Riley described, there were five iterations where the parts were measured. Uh, it, and they'll be described as iterations zero, one, two, three, and four. Uh, for a total of 11,700 measurements, which and where each measurement was made at two wavelengths and both the change in insertion loss and the absolute return loss were reported. That's quite a bit of data, but as you can see from this table, the samples are rather sparsely distributed uh, because there were so many different groups. There are the uh, five connector styles are shown there, the three types of contaminants, and then the, then, uh, the, the five participants. So for example, <clears throat> the, the bottom three connector styles, the multi-mode expanded beam, single mode expanded beam and single mode air gap had uh, 10, 10 samples in each of the tests with contaminants, the, uh, the dust and sebum tests. And those were different samples. So clean samples were started at the start of the dust test, and then it, uh, there were 10 of those. And then when the sebum test was run, a different set of 10 samples were used. The because of this sparsely distributed data, a statistical analysis was not attempted, and rather the results are summarized graphically, starting with the next slide. This slide summarizes the effect of contamination on the insertion loss of the multimode samples. The top set of graphs show the change in insertion loss for the multimode PC samples, and then the bottom graph shows the change in insertion loss for the multimode expanded beam samples. The lines are various quantiles. So for the, the purple dotted curve shows that 10% uh, of the measurements are less than that curve, the purple dotted curve. 90% of the measurements are below the red dashed curve. And then the green uh, dash dot curve is the median. So starting, starting uh, with the two graphs on the left, the control samples, there's really not much happening. Those samples did go through the, the sequence that Riley described, but th there was a block there that described contamination. Uh, no contamination occurred, but these samples were remated and they were cleaned in iterations uh, two, three, and four. So there is a, a you know, slight change in uh, a few of the samples during that uh, iteration one, which would normally be where contamination would occur, but otherwise they're they're pretty much featureless, as as would be hoped. The center two graphs show the effect of dust contamination. So starting with the graph uh, in the lower lower center, uh, multi-mode expanded beam ex exposed to dust, you see that at uh, iteration one is where that sample is contaminated and has not been cleaned. And the 90th percentile there is below uh, below 1 dB change in loss due to dust contamination without cleaning. Um, if you then go to step two, that's after the first cleaning has occurred, the losses uh, for the multi-mode expanded beam drop back to the level that they were at at iteration zero, the start of the test, um, showing that the, the uh, cleaning was effective and then Iterations three and four are after uh, two cleaning cycles, and then step four being after three cleaning cycles. And it stays clean and nothing, nothing bad happens there. If we then compare that to the multi-mode PC connector uh, in the, the, the top middle, you can see that at step one, that the change in insertion loss is, is much greater. And then in uh, iteration two, cleaning occurs and the losses don't um, completely return to the pre-contamination levels. We'll see later that uh, much of that loss is uh, due to a loss of physical contact uh, resulting in a, in a increase in insertion loss by between zero and, and 0.6 dB 
uh, which is why the median ends up at about uh, 0.3 dB in the middle of that. Uh, again, looking at the multimode PC samples, uh, subsequent cleaning steps in iterations three and four um, have very little effect. Uh, you'll see the, the 90th percentile jumps up. Um, that, that represents uh, you know, a device and, and several channels that were um, not only not making physical contact, but were probably separated by a, a, a fairly large amount. Now looking at the graphs on the, on the right, uh, showing the effects of sebum contamination uh, the tables are turned, and now it's the multimode expanded beam connector that is uh, more sensitive to the contaminant. When the oil is applied to the lens of those connectors, it has effect of, of changing the refractive index profile at the lens surface, uh, basically making a poor lens and, and, and leading to an increase in loss in iteration one. But in, if you look at multimode expanded beam, uh, in iterations uh, two, three, and four, that's after three, one, two, and three cleaning cycles, the losses return to basically the same level that they were prior to contamination. For physical contact, when the sebum contamination is applied and then the connectors are mated, uh, that, that oil is basically pushed out of the way. Um, it's not exactly an index matching material, but it's not a it's not as low an index as air, it, so it does better than an air gap. And the losses are, are more or less unchanged when exposed to, to sebum and remated. And then as they're cleaned, again, they, the losses um, the losses stay low. There's no additional change in loss. The next slide shows the results for single mode connectors. Same, style, same type of graph. Again, in the in the leftmost column, there's nothing happening with the control samples. The middle uh, the shows the dust contamination, and if we look at single mode expanded beam uh, dead center graph, uh, you'll see that it is experiencing a change. Um, it is um, you know, it is significant. The, the 90th percentile is lower for the single mode expanded beam than for the other connectors. But if you look at the air gap connector, which is also a non-contact connector on the in the bottom row, um, it's better at some percentiles and, and worse than at others as compared to the single mode expanded beam. The single mode APC connector though uh, fares the worst with the highest change in loss. And then after cleaning, uh, again the single the expanded beam connector in this case single mode cleans up nicely. Um, the the APC and the air gap connector um, clean up for the most part, but there are significant changes in, in both of those connector styles between um, after contamination and after cleaning versus the initial condition. So there are changes go happening. Uh, for, for APC, uh, some of that change again is due to a loss of physical contact uh, for an air gap connector that, 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 that comment does not apply. And then finally, in the in the on the three graphs on the right, you see the effect of sebum. Uh, again, uh, sebum has an effect on the expanded beam connector shown in the middle. Um, also has an effect on an air gap connector, which is uh, intended to have air between the connectors, not sebum. Uh, but again, the, the physical contact connector uh, experiences very little change. When it came time for cleaning, the expanded beam connector, as, as Riley mentioned, there was no um, dry cleaning tool available for that connector, so that data is not shown. The single mode expanded beam connector was clean with, uh, in the, for the dust contamination by um, a burst of air from compressed air can, I believe. Uh, the other connectors were cleaned, and they clean up nicely. The air gap connector and the APC connector both returned to levels prior to sebum contamination. In this experiment, both insertion loss and return loss were measured. The next slide shows the effect of contamination on return loss. The contaminants caused a noticeable decrease in, in the return loss, as is shown on these four sets of graphs. Uh, again, the control samples, not much is going on. There are some changes, though, in the multimode PC sample. 
And those were a result of a loss of physical contact, even during a normal mating of those connectors with no contaminant that was deliberately introduced. Um, looking at the other graphs, you'll see that there are changes at step one for both the dust and sebum contamination for, um, for most of the connector styles. The single mode expanded beam connector is uh, the return loss is relatively insensitive to the, both the dust and the sebum contamination. There does appear to be a bit more of an effect on the with the sebum contamination. Dust contamination, though, uh, nice and flat, very similar to uh, iteration zero, the baseline. The changes in return loss uh, for the, the physical uh, for the multimode PC. Um, can be explained in part by reflections from uh, that occur when when a physical contact is lost. For single mode APC, however, because that uh, mating interface is angled, any reflection from that interface when you lose physical contact does not change the return loss. So the the, the change in return loss there is most likely due to a scattering by the contaminant, and that. Apply those comments apply both to uh, dust and sebum contamination, and <clears throat> the air gap uh, connector shows similar effects where um, the return loss is affected at step one, and then um, uh, cleans up more or less. But you know you can judge for yourselves um, on all of these graphs uh, whether or not they're returning to the pre-contamination levels. So those were um, showing the, the, the various quantiles. The next sh slide shows a different way of looking at the data. The data on this slide is taken after contamination and before cleaning. The CDFs, the cumulative distribution functions, are the percentage of data that is less than the specified value of uh, delta IL. For example, in the upper right corner, that's showing uh, the effect of dust contamination, and this is as contaminated before cleaning. The the top the topmost curve uh, in blue is the uh, multimode expanded beam connector. So that is um, the the curve there jumps to 100% uh, below 2 dB, showing that the the maximum change in loss due to con dust contamination was less than 2 dB. That the multimode expanded beam is, is the least sensitive to contamination of the types of connectors that were tested. And on the other end of the graph, the bottommost graph is the single mode APC connector, where um, you know all, basically all, all connectors are affected, and uh, about 20% of the connectors had uh, very large changes in loss. Uh, this is not due, I mean, some of that is due to, to uh, the presence of contamination, Others are due to just a loss of uh, a loss of physical contact and actually a, a fairly probably a fairly large gap in some cases. And then the other the other three curves, um, and and in that top right graph lie between the uh, multimode expanded beam and the single mode APC connector, giving you an idea of the relative sensitivity of the different connector styles. The bottom graph, the same style of graph uh, showing the effect of sebum. The, the top two curves in the bottom graph are showing the physical contact connectors, which are basically unaffected by sebum. And then uh, the, the bottom curve, the, the gray with the two dots, is a single mode expanded beam, which was the one uh, most affected by the sebum contamination. And then the other connectors lying in between. The next few slides show the wavelength dependence of the insertion loss. Uh, this slide, uh, on this slide, scatter plots are used to compare the losses at the long and short wavelengths. These two plots show all of the data in the experiment, all DUTs, all iterations. This is sort of the big picture. You can see that for multi-mode, the effect uh, of all on all the tests is really the same at the uh, 850, the short wavelength, and 1300 nanometers, the long wavelength. For single mode, um, again, the, the highly correlated effects between um, 1310 and 1550 nanometers, uh, a little more scatter in, in that data, uh, 
possibly indicating uh, different loss mechanisms. The next two slides zoom in on the loss between uh, 0 and 2 dB. So these, this first slide shows the, wave, the wavelength dependence of the physical contact connectors. A prominent feature is a sort of a box of points that is a signature of an air gap. So the reflection between uh, the, the reflectivity of that air to glass interface is about 0.15 dB, but due to interference, you can have um, uh, either a zero loss going forward or uh, up to uh, 0.6 dB loss as, um, as when you get constructive or destructive interference. And so you end up with this, this box of points really indicating not the presence of contaminants, but the, the presence of an, of an air gap. And we'll refer to that sometimes as, uh, as an etalon, uh, the interference that you get between the parallel end faces. And the next slide shows the wavelength dependence for the, for the non-contact connectors. The non-contact connectors are the two expanded beam connectors and the air gap connector. There is no 0.6 dB box of points since these connectors are designed to have an air gap and they're not therefore sensitive if that gap changes by a little bit. Uh, and one of the benefits of the non-contact connectors is that they avoid this failure mode. The trade-off is that the losses of the clean non-contact connectors are typically a bit higher than those of the clean physical contact connectors, something that needs to be taken into account when making the evaluation uh, between different connector styles. On the uh, next slide, we'll take another look at the uh, multi-mode uh, physical contact connector. For this style of connector, we have access to both the uh, the transmitted signal using the insertion loss and the, the reflected signal um, monitoring the return loss. The because of energy conservation, the reflected power and the transmitted power, the sum of those, is equal to the incident power. And in the case of a um, a connector polished perpendicular to the fiber axis, you get all of that light that's reflected. And therefore, uh, you can look here at the at the uh, solid black curve showing uh, energy conservation. You know, we're in, uh, um, we're, we're using units of uh, dB, so it's not a linear curve, but it's, uh, it's, it's showing that if the, the sum of the powers is equal to the incident power, we'd expect the light on the, the, the uh, points to lie on that line. And indeed, many of them do, uh, again, proving that, that uh, one of the problems here with these physical contact connectors was the formation of an etalon uh, when contaminated. The final two slides of data show how the insertion loss losses of the physical contact connectors uh, change when cleaned. In particular, uh, this is showing this single mode APC connector comparing iterations one and iterations two in the scatter plot. The data is spread out across the horizontal axis, that's iteration one, that is um, as, as contaminated. So losses go up higher than two dB, but it's just uh, narrowed down so you can see better what's going on at low losses. And then iteration two cleaned, um, most of the points are below 0.6 dB, uh, indicating that most of the contaminants have been removed. If you look at the at the next slide, though, you'll see that as we do additional cleaning steps, um, the losses stay within that 0.6 dB range. So again, iteration two, the horizontal axis was after one cleaning step. Iteration four is after three cleaning steps. And really, the points are just moving around within that box, indicating etalon behavior. So between cleaning steps uh, one, two, and three, um, really, the, the, it's it's not that the, it's not that the uh, contaminants are changing; it's that the gap is changing, and that's leading to a change in loss for a given fiber. But on on average, uh, the losses are just staying within that 0.6 dB box. So next, Tatiana will discuss the impact of these results on the total cost of ownership. Thank you, Michael.
Uh, our team also would like to understand the impact of connector type on total cost of ownership in the data centers. And uh, based on the result which Mike and Riley presented, you can see that non-physical contact connectors are less sensitive to contamination and they less likely to be damaged by contamination than physical type of connectors. And definitely it is one of prime motivation for considering of the use. However, uh, non-PC connectors, I still have higher loss than PC connectors. And uh, this is needs to be taken in consideration when you uh, uh, designing overall a link or considering certain um, performance for your components, because uh, it means uh, potentially designers need to increase the optical output power of transceivers and uh, which can potentially lead on on overall power consumption and even on uh, thinking further on cooling requirements for the system and uh, its uh, impact overall uh, power consumption as you know it's very important point now in, in terms of sustainability therefore it's a very important consideration next slide please so for using non-PC connectors could affect cost in a number of ways. Um, therefore, these types of connectors potentially have higher cost. Therefore, it could be different cable assembly cost, and it could be increased system capital cost due to the need to accommodate higher losses, as I discussed in previous slide. It's also increased system operation cost due to the need to for higher power and potentially even associated cooling. But there is many benefits, yes. Uh, benefits, um, first of all, it's a less need for cleaning during installation, uh, less need for inspection during installation, uh, decreased trunk failure rate due to failed or unclean connectors, and reduced need for some spare dark fiber in track cables due to less failures in terms of connectors. And similar can be applicable not only on installation, but also on a, a lifetime maintenance. So for during lifetime of cables, there is a decreased need for cleaning, decreased need for inspection, and decreased uh, system downtime due in service failures from contamination. Uh, of course, um, I uh, need to mention that these type of connectors potentially require even different uh, cleaning tools and potentially different costs could be involved. So for, as you can see, it's a very long list and there is some cons and pros and uh, uh, it needs to be balanced and understanding what is the real benefits. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I'd like to add that in this project, we couldn't draw any quantitative conclusions of the cost impact of expanded beam connectors. And one of the reasons, because in our experiment, we really heavily contaminated connectors, and we believe this uh, level of contamination exceeding um, some level of contamination in the data centers. But if the uh, relative dust resistance of non-PC connectors still holds in DC environment, we believe that links with such type of connectors leads to less failures when, uh, when connected without cleaning. That definitely there is some benefits associated with implementation of expanded beam connectors. Next slide, please. Finally, I'd like to summarize the project results. The results of this study give a very broad overview of the effect of contaminants on different connector styles. As we presented, 195 duties were tested, grouped by different participants, which five companies pr provided uh, data contaminants and connector styles, and thousands of data points were collected. Based on this study, Single mode and multi mode expanded beam connectors are less sensitive to that than single mode and multi mode PC connectors. At the same time, we can compare multi mode versus single mode connectors. Multi mode connectors such as multi mode PC or multi mode expanded beam 
we are less sensitive to dust than corresponding single mode versions, such as single mode APC and single mode expanded B. Single mode air gap connector is a non contact connector which has no lens. And we show that this connector is less sensitive to debris than single mode APC. However, it was more sensitive than single mode expanding B. Next slide. Wet contamination also has a large effect on non contact connector styles and much less effect on physical contact connectors. Both wet and dry contaminants affect the return loss of multi-mode PC, single-mode APC, and single-mode air gap connectors. It's very interesting that return loss of single-mode expanding beam connectors was less, much less affected by contamination. Interesting conclusions came from our cleaning study. We proven that one cleaning iteration with push activating drying cleaning tool, two clicks, gives results which are very similar to three cleaning iteration. It means one cleaning operation is sufficient. The expanding beam connectors clean up also very well, but some of PC connectors show evidence of air gap at alone, then results in change in loss as large as 0.6 dB, which was presented by Michael. Therefore, we also investigated the impact of connector types on total cost of ownership for data center operation and discussed in light of the project results. We believe that as this technology are improving over time and becoming more mature, the total impact of total cost of ownership will become more beneficial for data center applications. This is my last slide. Thank you so much for attending this webinar and uh, our team is open for the questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tatiana. I'd like to thank uh, the project leaders and the presenters and indeed all of those that uh, participated in, in this uh, very successful project. Um, as Tatiana said, we're happy to receive your questions now using the chat function. Um, and if there's limited time today, um, then you can always uh, email uh, us. You've got my contact uh, email uh, address on the slides as well as the two project leaders. There is a uh, question in the chat, uh, and that question is, uh, can you elaborate on your decision to limit sebum contamination to the fiber area? Do you want to take this question? Sure. So uh, partly because the fiber area is the area that is most sensitive to the um, the optical path. And so with the sebum in the optical path, uh, that is the uh, area of interest. Um, in the physical contact connector, uh, the sebum doesn't provide a mechanical resistance to the mating. And in the expanded beam connector, um, that the uh, the pad was shaped uh, for the, the same for all connectors, but also to uh, get into the area where the um, the optical path is. So it was really the uh, it was limited to that area to apply the same contamination to all the connector types and be able to accommodate the different features on the connector interface. Thank you, Riley. I think it's a very good, good, good question from Kevin. All right, and then a uh, another question: uh, Would a anti-smudge coating of the lenses help to improve expanded beam signal retention? Riley, maybe you can continue. I think it's uh, again very specific. Uh, we we didn't investigate. Maybe uh, sorry. Who answers this question? Maybe we'll uh, uh, have more discussion and uh, potentially something which we can consider to investigate more. <laughs> 
Charlie, what who answered the question? What company? Uh, so I, I see the participant, um, uh, Gabri Hoogland uh, company. Um, I do not know. A Sabic. Okay, okay. Th thank you. Uh, I, I think we we'll maybe take this uh, question offline. We didn't uh, um, investigate. Um, can you repeat the question again? But I, I think specific, specific, we didn't investigate maybe something to consider it in future. Right, so the question is, would an anti-smudge coating of the lenses help to improve expanded beam signal retention uh, as the connector is, is contaminated? And I guess I would say that uh, if there are mechanisms that you can use to prevent contamination, um, then any mechanism that would prevent contamination would help improve signal retention. Okay. But I think that's up to the connector designers to uh, investigate. Thank you. I, I'd like to I'd like to also point out that part part of the work that was done by the team was to develop, you know, the two test methods that Riley described, and so I think using the test method that was shown here for sebum contamination would be one way to evaluate whether an anti smudge coating really has the effect that that it was hoped for. So it's a, a suggestion if someone has that type of coating and wanted to try it, uh, perhaps get details of that fixture from um, from Tiger or Tatiana. Yeah, and, and this is, could be something which we can uh, consider at least uh, for future study in a phase two of the project. Um, I'd like to uh, say that uh, this project, is, we're planning to continue our research in phase two. And if you're interested in participation or uh, this subject is interesting for you, please uh, let us know. And you can see all contact information on this slide. Okay, there is a, another question. Uh, how is the amount of dust contamination controlled from one, one round of application to the next? And so I'll answer this one. Uh, so for each connector style, there were, say, five uh, physical contact pinned connectors tested, and then five physical contact unpinned connectors tested, and then so on for each other connector style. And so for those five connectors of that one set, a certain amount of dust was put into the dust box, uh, a DUT was put in, say, the first of the five, and the dust was... Um, agitated by the airflow, by the one second air burst. That same amount of dust was used to contaminate that one set of five connectors. After that, the dust box was purged to remove the free dust. A new measured amount of dust was inserted. And then the next five connectors were contaminated with that same uh, amount of dust. So there was a, a procedure in place to contaminate a set of connectors, purge the dust box, reload the dust box, and then test another set. Uh, another yes. question? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Tatiana, do you have any other comments uh, there? I, I read the question quickly. It was in a chat. Uh, um, about uh, what optical sources were used for testing for single mode and multi mode fiber. I, I can add uh, that for our experiment, three companies collected all data and, uh, um, and the samples were provided by five participants. Therefore, it depends on a, a specific um, participant, different sources where light sources were used for testing of uh, multi-mode and uh, single-mode fiber, but all uh, commercial e e available equipment. Therefore, sources can be different from participants to participants. Um, 
Riley and Michael, do you want to add? Uh, I would add, I, I don't know if you've mentioned, Tatiana, that um, you recently presented an IWCS paper that uh, this group um, wrote and then and you presented it at the uh, at the conference and there are some details there there are some comparisons between the the uh, the different participants uh, who tested um, the single mode APC and the multi-mode PC connectors just to, to get an idea of how consistent were our results from from uh, one participant uh, to the next because I think that was actually a bigger concern than the controlling the amount of contamination from one round of application to the next. The bigger concern was how do we how do we make that standardized from uh, one participant to the next? Yes, thank you, Michael. Yes, and paper is available. It was just recently published in October by IWCS conference, and uh, um, it has all details. Any more questions? There is another um, question about LED sources. We we did, we didn't study yet, Mike. Go ahead, Michael. I was going to say we yeah we didn't uh, we didn't study certainly uh, it, it the if you look at the distribution of light on the on the uh, on the lens for example of a lens connector that is sensitive to how the how the modes are filled in that uh, multi mode connect in in a multi mode lens connector so it could make potentially make a difference. Um, I, I believe that the multi-mode uh, connectors that were tested were used in overfilled launch condition. That's uh, fairly standard right now. Uh, I'm sorry, in encircled flux, uh, encircled flux uh, compliant distribution of light. Um, so that, that does change change the distribution on the on the lens surface, and as that changes, it could affect the loss. I think that would be a relatively minor contributor um, in this experiment. Because there's there's really quite a lot of variability in in uh, in the contamination that gets applied to each lens, for example, or to each fiber for the uh, physical contact and and uh, air gap connectors. Thank you, Michael. Any additional questions? We have many interesting questions, specifically on experimental methodology and details. I'd just like to add that um, you can always send questions in um, to the email addresses given there if you think of them at a, at a later date. A pause for a, a few seconds. Uh, we'll bring this webinar to a close on the hour. And again, I'd like to thank um, the presenters are giving an excellent job. Uh, and indeed the whole uh, the whole um, project team for their work. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Grace. Thank you to all participants. And again, if you have interest in a further study, for expanded beam connectors for data center application. Please let us know because uh, we are planning second phase of this project.